Hey folks, really excited about today's video. We're going to take a look at making a 3D character from a photograph. Now the format of this video is going to be a little different from the normal videos that I shoot, which are very much step-by-step um, -step tutorials. This time I thought I'd do something a little bit more like a workflow video. So I've invited in a friend of mine to go down through the setup with me. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, let me know in the comments and I can put together a little tutorial on it. Hope you enjoy it. Let's go. I don't know, like maybe what we're doing now, the workflow thing we did now, and how I explained it, if I cut the video you're currently recording, and I mm. put that up, maybe that's the thing to do, right? We're already talking about this stuff for 20 minutes. I suspect the conversational aspects of what we're doing probably makes the thing flow a good bit better. I don't know, I'll have to go back in this video. Right? Yeah, you, I mean, look, it, it, it really does depend. I mean, ultimately, there's a piece where when you when you reflect back on the youtube you watch you tend to watch people who are enthusiastic which clearly yes. you are about this so you know it, it probably has merited in that alone um as opposed to you know hey everybody here's a tutorial that i will teach you how to do blah 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 you know boom uh, boom 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 there you go uh yeah i've been interested in this idea of taking photographs and turning them into 3d right when i was at uh when when i was at dean egg uh there was a guy there called uh OJ, Oliver James, the really called Sedway, who wrote this thing called Double Vision. And the idea was that they'd have a load of cameras around the outside. And from each camera, they basically shoot roll over from each camera and chop up a body, right? To get the shape of a human. Right. So you would have a basically a uh, photogrammetry video of an actor in a scene. I that was the idea. Anyway, I've always kind of kept an eye on this. So yeah, yeah. The thing is this, right? If you want to generate a 3D model from a photograph, what you normally need is depth. Okay, that's what you care about. But the problem is this, right? You won't get depth from one view, from one monocular view. You won't get depth. And actually, you'll be way out. You think you'll be close. If you've ever tried doing body tracking or tracking a character to a place, you'll be way out, way further than you think. So it's a difficult problem to solve, right? Um, so one way to, to help is to shoot what's called stereo pair images, where basically you're doing stereography, which is the process of what they do when they take a 2D movie and try to turn it into a 3D movie. We've got two okay. cameras, they're offset about the distance from your eyes, they converge, etc. You know the idea, right? So now you can measure depth. But the problem is, is you won't easily get stereo pair images, right? Unless you go and build the rig yourself. And the actual conversion process is too complicated for anyone to ever bother. Just in January, with the AI stable diffusion stuff, one of the things that came out was uh, boosting depth perception from monocular vision or something like that. It's called one of the papers that came out. Right? Now, so yeah. I was looking at that. We're trying to read them through it. Essentially, what it's doing is it's taking a picture and it's using AI to estimate the other eye pair, and it can now generate depth, right? So, okay. okay. So I was thinking about that, right? So I'm going to share a screen if I can. Can you see that? Yeah, I can it. This is a well shot image. Look at those eyes. Um, Look at him on the detail, you're getting all the beard. That's fucking okay, awesome. Right? Like, you're getting all the layers and everything, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, like, I'll, I'll get out to the to the jumper here, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Beautiful. Um, this was the image that I was that I shot, right? So, two issues you run into straight away. Well, the first is it's, it's actually pretty flat, right? It, it's just extruded up a little bit. And the other is if we zoom in here, you can see I'm getting banding, right? Now, that banding uh, was something I was struggling to try and get rid of. And I am very confident that it's 8-bit banding, right? So uh, in other words, if this was a 16-bit image or a third, ideally a 32-bit image, I'd be off to the races, right? And you not do it as log 10-bit as a raw? Yeah, I, I could play around with that. Right? And I, that's sort of a smaller problem, as you'll see as you go down through it, right? But you can see the level of detail here is great. It looks like a, an etch or something. Already off to a fairly good start, right? I'm bringing this in as a height field, just to note that, right? Uh, it's essentially using the terrain to a system within Houdini, and it's just a height field to generate all the stuff, right? What I started doing was I, I remap it a little bit. So I'm remapping the values. So I'm starting to try and essentially do a levels on it, right? I'm pushing out a little bit. And I'm starting to get a little bit more depth. I, I tried blurring this off and stuff didn't quite work the way I wanted to. So I brought in another depth map with just lower lower amounts of data in there. You still see the banding here, right? You see yeah. the banding across it, right? But then, then I basically remap this guy and then I blurred it off a little bit and I end up with something that looks kind of like this. Starting to get a bit mm -hmm. more depth. 
I look a little bit like Otto, if you remember Otto from Deep Space Nine, when they were doing like that morph things where he used to go from one character to another. But yeah. like in now push <clears throat> the height fields can be blended together fairly easily. The volume would blend together fairly well. So I can put my high quality detail over the other mesh, right? Certainly yeah. a little bit better. Then I hit a little bit of a brick wall, to be honest. Uh lots of high quality detail, but the low then like the medium quality mesh underneath is not good enough, right? The banding thing was annoying me and I couldn't get it any further. And I was kind of giving up at that point. But then I thought to myself, okay, well, maybe it's it. So, so, you know, shit goes in, shit comes out. Right? This, is a data, this is a data quality problem. So I was like, where can I get a better quality depth map? And I was like, depth maps are just Zen depth paths. Like, again, you get lost with all this stuff in CG, but height maps, depth maps, mm -hmm. and Zen depth passes are all exactly the same. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. CG trying to be crazy sometimes. So I was like, I can just generate my own, right? So I went off and got the, the Lee Perrier, you know, um, uh, this thing. Yeah. And I generated a Z depth pass and I remapped that. So that is the remap of the original head. Now, I blurred out the eyes a little bit, so I blurred out some of the details. All I don't know how well you know the real model. This is it, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just take a second to think about that, right? Because initially I was like, oh, great, it works. Right? I'll, I'll be okay. It'll work. I mean, is, it, um, is it vector displacement? How is it there in, in trials on the Mars? So it is a height field. So a, tr a height field is basically a 2D volume, right? Well, it's a volume that only has, uh, understands one direction up. Uh, volumes start to get heavy. Um, so basically, if you get rid of two of the directions, it starts to be much lighter. Uh, so you would probably get that from displacement. The problems you'll get with displacement though is that you'll need loads and loads of polys. And you'll get placing issues and things like that. Right? So it'll take long to render. Volumes get around all of that fairly quickly. And now that you can see there's issues. Like you see, here's the stretching here where it goes That's directly. I'm wondering, like, why, why are you getting stretching all the kind of lateral, uh, whatever it's called, nasal I'm getting it thing. here. Uh, wait, wait, it's getting it. It's perpendicular oh, in there as well. Yeah. Perpendicular to the blade. Right? Do you know much about vector displacement? I know I'm harping on about it, but like, it always struck me as kind of funny that vector displacement maps never really caught on. And now I haven't yeah, pushed eight degrees of the tech a huge amount, but like, you know, it's, it is built into the brush already. Uh, I mean, it is effectively press a button and get a different type of map. Yeah, again, it's starting in that out, right? But like, and clearly they're along the same method as the first test that you did, right? Where a little bit unfair to take a 3D model and put it back into textures and then get a 3D model back out. But it is a good proof of concept in terms of how much the data fidelity stays throughout the process. Uh, I do know a bit about it. Yeah, I do know a little bit about it. It won't work in height fields. With height fields, there's no idea of that. So there's nothing to map it to. Now, you could go and create your own volume version. Right? It gets comp Do you know what volumes and build in your own versions? It's a little bit complicated. But, but just go with me for a minute, right? Just think about what this actually means here, right? Take a look at this image. Now, I generated an NCG, but essentially what I needed was a good quality depth map to generate this. This means that when we get better quality depth maps, you will be able to store 3D model information in a photograph. Yeah. You'll be able to put it into an AI and get an estimated depth of it, right? But it basically means I can go and download a photograph of Angelina Jolie I can put it into this, and I should, in theory, if I've got a good enough depth map, that should be the result. So that's a very useful thing to think about. Right? Yeah. You speed that process up a little bit, and we shoot high quality video, and this guy will start moving. Once I had this, I realized that I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, so I went back down to my own one, and I started thinking about other ways to get the shape. So this is the detail. This is, this is where we were. This is the detail shape. And every head is basically the same shape, right? This is the default head in, in Houdini, right? And I turned that into a height field. Now, I ended up adding some shapes around the outside to hold up the beard. You can see how rough it needs to be, right? And then mm -hmm. I use that to push out the shape just a little bit more, right? So now I've gone from this guy out to this guy. So now I've got to about here, where I'm still getting a lot of the detail uh, in terms of the beard. So I'll just zoom in here so you can see it. So I'm still getting all this like fine detail around the skin. Uh, I I'm getting some of the skin pores coming through. Now that's also some of the banding coming through. But at this skin, it looks kind of nice. It's almost like a sculpture thing, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. starting to be starting to be a little bit more towards the 3D side. Yeah, right? taking the jumper, that jumper's epic. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's epic. Look. Um, 
So and now the eyebrows are going in instead of coming out and all the rest of that. But look at the eyes. Like there's something really nice about this, right? It's not quite there. The nose, the bridge of the nose is a bit broken. Uh, maybe the uh, the ears are slightly fucked. And underneath the chin, <laughs> look at my chin. God, <laughs> look the ladies. For um, well, I am puss and boots. Um, that, that that bit where he takes that tent at the end, uh, where he picks up the sword, and he's like, uh, you know, prepare to meet puss and boots or whatever at the fight, and then he kicks the. Uh, that's that old fight scene is great, but when the when the hook thing lands at his feet, he kicks the hook over to him. And I'm like, go on, get him. <laughs> that's great. I really bought into the old book. That was next to the three of them. I mean, uh, he's a very valuable uh, character. I, I don't know, but Terrence is always great. Right, he's very good. Right, from the yeah. very first wire jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was a point where I was like, I want Antonio Barrett there is the really bedtime stories. <laughs> I am about here or thereabouts. But then I actually had a photograph of the side of my head. So this is the this is the side profiles going down a lot, which made me think one thing: I, I need to move the lights around. I look great in a coin. <laughs> look at this thing! I never crown a coin. I was like, I look fucking awesome on a coin. <laughs> anyway, leave that aside. Uh, so then I have the side profile here. I'm doing something fairly similar, right? Where basically I'm remapping and I'm trying to push in the shape of the head a little bit. Now I have the side profile and I'm trying to merge those together. No, I've been semi-successful at this, but I think I could do another pass on. Like, I'm moving the mesh around, I'm keeping the ear here, and I want okay. the tip of the nose, because I lost the tip of the nose before, and then I project them back on. So now I get the tip of the nose, which was missing before. Now, I haven't done subtraction, so you can see the glabella here needs to be cut back, right? But I'm also picking up the ear on the side. It's not very well lined up. I can fill in some of the gaps over here, right? So I should be able to get that to work. Um, so that gets me down to about here. Now, hold on, hold on to your panty holes, right? This is still in. This is still a volume there, right? And that's looking pretty good. Like if I told you I got that from a photo, I know it's lumpy here. So this could all be better. But if I just told you I did that from a photo, and I could plug in a different photo and get the same results, I think both would be pretty impressive. That to be honest. However, this thing is still a height field, right? So that means that you can use all of the trade tools on it. So this Somehow is some right noise. Off. This is some noise running through it. All right. <laughs> and uh, I'll give you another one. Here's, here's some other noise running through it. Like I can take these in lots of different directions, right? Uh, and you can only push it so far before it breaks, right? But the other thing you could do with it uh, is let's, let's turn this guy back on here for a second. So this will take a second to go and cook. It, like there's quite good terrain tools within UVNE that are quite easy to use. It's sort of like compositing. It's like you can kind of layer things up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is <laughs> this is my face with uh with terrain erosion on it, <laughs> right? Uh, which is pretty fucking nuts, right? So it should step through it now. So I can basically will it will it step through? And uh, I can step through. And it should run relatively quickly now, I think. Yeah, you can start to see it there. Look, so the erosion is kicking in. A little bit more erosion and a little bit more erosion, right? So essentially, I could erode my own head like a boat bridge, which is fucking awesome. It makes you feel like you're about, certainly up, you're 10 miles high, basically. It's like, I am king, right? So that in and of itself was pretty cool. Now, I won't bore you with the next bit in terms of how I set up the lighting of it. So these are some of the renders, right? So so that's the size of the face, and then it's eroding down, right? Then I started to bring in some colour like this guy. It's like that looks like a, a tool album cover, right? Um, came together quite quickly. This is the adding a little bit of subsurface scattering, right? So you start to get this kind of blobby alien thing going on. That's, that's just subsurface scattering on the original mesh. Like, you yeah. know, if I told you I got that from a phonograph, one photo, well, it's two photographs, but really it's sort of one. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive for one photo, right? No, no, it's great. It's great. I mean, clear, clearly there's a piece where um, the flexibility is amazing, right? Like, in terms of even just going back and instead of pulling out the A bit, pulling out the CR2 and trying to get it from, uh, keep the detail, but lose the bonding. Um, I mean, yeah. it's very impressive to get it from one, one image. 
Um, so this is that this is that image coming back over the top, and then I fade it back down a little bit just to bring in some more of those details. Again, just trying to fade it in. So this is kind of coming into more photo real stuff. But yeah, cleaning up the edges. So this is the this is the mountain shapes. So that's loads of blood. <laughs> Look at these fucking things. <gasps> Like, uh, you can animate these easy enough as well, right? So, so that's the curvature coming back in. Uh, that, that's sort of roughly where I'm at with the moment. So, like, you can animate that noise very easily. A lot of the time in UD, when people do this stuff, they use something called VDBs, which is this kind of sparse volume set, right? And they're relatively fast compared to the old volumes, but they're still slow, right? But yeah. The problem is they're incredibly resolution dependent. So to get more and more detail, which is actually yeah, what you want, you end up, yeah, you, you, you go into millions, you go into millions and millions of voxels, and then you're writing like five minutes a frame. It's just like, yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. So, um, so the last little bit, just so you know, was this, right? And again, it kind of does matter for anything. The last little bit is this. We just moved this off. The last little bit is I need, to, I need to chop off the back of it here, and I need to merge in the back of the test head so that you end yes. up with an actual head, right? Rather than what it feels like at the moment, which is sort of a 2D thing. It's kind of creepy from the back as well. Look at that eyes are following you thing. <laughs> the, which I sort of solved as well over here. So again, this goes back to sort of a volume based solution. I can't remember if I left this in a good place and take a second to cook. So I'll just start it on there. And um, what my video will start to slow down now because this thing is cooking on the background. It's probably eating up all my cycles, right? That's um, all good. You, you, your voice is breaking up a little bit. I don't know if you clicked on that link. But um, there is. Oh, I will in just one sec. But then he stays throughout the process, and oh, clearly, God. clearly it does. I think. Um, Houdini, I think Houdini go boom boom. Uh, the volume thing I was running. That's what I mean about volume. Like I up the I up the the quality of it. It killed all my RAM. It probably killed my video. It killed the web. It killed the web browser in the background. Yeah, I just I just chewed up my RAM there basically trying to show up. Uh, I'll just see if I can read. I, I, can you still hear me? You can't. When I, you're not apples for apples. You're you're not apples for apples. Then, just to be fair, right? Like the Lee Griggs data stuff was as ZDEP pass. We can measure every pixel basically on that image. That that is what the ZDEP pass is. It is a measure of all the pixels from the camera to the object, right? But oh, I mean, yes, we will get there with depth maps eventually. But I don't think that's happening tomorrow with AI. I think that's. We we get better data than we have. Current. I'm not quite clear on there's there's some of the iPhone stuff is that map based on takes. So it, it, it is that's that H E I C that H E I C format that actual format of the depth map it is it's it's why you can do the blurring it's it's the same stuff happening on my Pixel right there's two cameras in there so that's the yeah, that, stereo. I mean without what, what, jumping the, the, the quality right, isn't right. great. The quality isn't great. I've, I've actually the um, and actually, there's a brilliant guy up on YouTube, I can post you a link to him. He compares all of the stable diffusion um, monocular depth tests. There's loads of them, absolutely loads of them out there. He compares a load of those. And I was watching quite a few of his videos. And actually, he used to be a stereographer. He used to do stereo pair images. And he says in one of his videos, he says something like, look, if you had said to me three or four years ago that we'd be able to get better depth maps from the AI than we could from stereo pairs, I would have said you were crazy. But that is the world we're heading towards, right? Yeah. And um, so, like, this is a big issue that they need. Like, I'm interested to post this from a CG point of view. Like, the, the the Facebooks of the world, the metaverse people of the world, really do need a version where Granny can take a photo of herself and end up with a 3D model, right? Yeah. Well, that we, 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 you know, there's cleverer people than me looking at this in depth. So they will get there, and, and I mean more than just the texture capture now, right? I mean the actual depth capture, and then that in real time, so you can drive, you can drive the lip sync and the, you know, the the volume for the mouth and all the rest of that, right? Like, there's very clever people spending a lot of money trying to solve this. You can be I'm sure of it, right? So it will be cracked. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I have had a blast doing this. It just kept together. It was one of those things that just kind of sort of kept together. That eyes are following you, thing. <laughs>